conversations about intelligence agencies gathering information and then using it to blackmail targeted individuals are not uncommon. The main character, Connor, became a victim of the NSA and the entire corrupt judicial system. But could it be different? Could the NSA and the judges have become victims of Connor? You have chased it puzzles! Show yourself! Young bartender Connor Black, recently released from prison, is once again facing the court. This time the charges are much more serious and carry potential life sentences, espionage, terrorism and murder. However, in the courtroom, Connor behaves casually and even carefreely. His testimony for the court begins with a story about a brawl in a bar. A rude customer didn't leave a tip for the waitress. But the fight that ensued seemed insufficient to Connor, and using his hacking skills he breached the ungrateful customer's account and transferred all the money and bitcoins. At some point, a link to the Cicada 3301 community website arrived on Black's computer. The community promotes ideas of changing the world and recruits the finest human minds by sending an intellectual test that only a few can pass. There are rumors that those who manage to pass the test are offered a new successful life full of important tasks. But no one knows for sure, everyone who has passed it disappears. Connor confidently completes what he thought was a simple task, only to receive a response that the task was a trap, and only truly intelligent individuals can understand and solve it correctly. Tired and intoxicated, the man strikes his computer, knocking a bottle of wine onto it, causing the device to burn out. Morning comes. Connor's nine-year-old neighbor Sophia knocks on his door. She points at the door. There awaits an eviction notice due to non-payment. Black tries to slip away unnoticed, but the deaf-mute landlord catches up to him, explaining through gestures that he's evicting the tenant. Returning to the courtroom, it's apparent that even as the narrative gains momentum, Black's demeanor remains unaffected. He continues to fool around, crafting a figurine from a scrap of paper. The judge inquires about Connor's acquaintance with his accomplice, and he continues his story. Leaving home with Sophia, they head to the library. It was their Saturday tradition. Gwen Schaefer was a new young librarian. The girl engages in friendly conversations with visitors until Connor notices Cicada's symbol on her computer monitor and begins to ask questions. Connor's best friend, Avi Baginski, is playing chess outdoors with a group of elderly men. Black rudely interrupts the game, swiftly explaining all possible combinations to the players and whisking Avi away. On their way, they decide to grab a snack, but Connor is out of money. He asks Avi to buy him a hot dog and steals a bottle of soda. Connor tells his friend about Cicada, enthusiastically sharing his desire to change the world, and concludes his entire monologue by asking Avi for money to buy a new computer. Avi refuses and shows him an obscene gesture. Black returns home only to find he cannot get into his apartment as the locks have been changed. The landlord doesn't even allow him to retrieve his belongings. Seeking help, he approaches his young neighbor who happens to be alone at home. He needs to use your computer to sell and launder the stolen bitcoins. The girl lets him into the house. At that moment, Sophie's enraged mother storms into the room, suspecting Connor of robbery and sprays pepper spray in his eyes. Black rushes into the corridor and sees unfamiliar armed individuals knocking on his door. On any other day, he could have escaped unnoticed, but now, unable to open his eyes properly due to the irritation, he falls right into their hands. An arrest begins, Connor is thrown to the ground, handcuffed, and one of the police officers starts removing his pants. At this point, the judge interrupts the defendant's narrative and asks him to recount the events without lewd fantasies and absurd jokes. Connor finds himself in a tinted van belonging to the NSA where agents offer him a deal. He can infiltrate Cicada to expose its founder and in return, the government will provide him with a substantial monetary reward. Otherwise, he will face charges including fabricated crimes and be imprisoned for a long time. Black agrees to try becoming a member of the organization after which the NSA agents throw him out of the moving van. Connor comes to Avi's house and tells him about what happened. The friend is somewhat shocked by the unfolding events but promises to help Black figure everything out. Black returns to the library once again. He did not earn Gwen's trust in the morning so she speaks to him rather sharply. He asks the girl to let him use the library computer to access the Cicada website. Connor starts solving the challenge from the website anew and he starts making progress. 
Gwen, who has seen that the guy has managed to solve what she couldn't for a long time, convinces him to proceed through the subsequent trials together. After solving a few more riddles, the young individuals realize that they now have GPS coordinates. One of the points is quite close to the library, and the two of them head there. While Connor waits for Gwen to get ready, he notices a strange person in a deer mask in the corridor. But the person quickly disappears, so the girl doesn't even have a chance to notice him. The young participants travel to the designated location. Along the way, they feel like someone might be following them, but the car falls behind at one of the turns. They arrive at an abandoned place covered in graffiti and struggle to figure out what exactly they need to pay attention to. Eventually, Gwen notices the cicada symbol and a QR code on the asphalt. Scanning it with their smartphone camera, they receive a new task. On the side, they once again spot the strange person in the deer mask. The new task from cicada is a fragment of an unknown painting. Connor knows who can help them, and they head to the institute where Avi lectures. The guy is not thrilled about getting involved in a game with an obscure community, but the fragment still piques his interest, and he assists in deciphering the puzzle to advance to the next stage of the task. Avi treats his friends to homemade cupcakes at his home while they attempt to solve the new riddle. After considering all options, Gwen realizes they need to gain access to the storage of old books. The three of them arrive at the archive, but the security guard can't let them in without a special pass. Avi takes care of this issue, flirting with the guard and distracting him, while Connor and Gwen sneak into the main storage area. Gwen finds the necessary book, but they don't have time to study it. The guard notices the open doors and sprays black with pepper spray. Connor manages to tear out the needed page from the ancient book, and after revealing it to Avi, they make their escape. Just as they exit the archive and discuss their next steps, one by one the young people start disappearing. Strange people in deer masks put sacks over their heads and drag them in an unknown direction. Black wakes up while already on the move in a car. After freeing Avi and Gwen from the sex, he tries to understand what's happening but can't manage to say much. The car stops in the forest and the strange deer-masked people pull their friends out of the trunk and shove them into a dugout pit. Gwen manages to break free and attempts to flee, but gunfire starts. The deer-masked people begin shooting at individuals dressed as babies. The judge interrupts Connor's story once again. The NSA agents are outraged by his fabrications about their costumes and bizarre behavior, clarifying that at the time of the arrest, they were wearing standard uniforms, not ridiculous outfits. Black continues his narrative. The NSA operatives saved Connor and his friends from being killed, but they take this stolen page for examination. Avi and Gwen, having severed ties with Black, refuse to participate in further deciphering, so he goes alone to a cyber cafe and enters the key received after the examination. The new task from Cicada is related to light, and when Connor follows all the instructions, several districts of the city lose power simultaneously. Riots and looting erupt in the streets. However, Black goes where the website indicates, and he receives a new task. Street lights, garlands, and traffic lights are transmitting a signal in Morse code, and Connor deciphers the text from these signals. Connor receives congratulations. He has completed all of Cicada's challenges. As a reward, he is invited to a costume ball in London. Connor heads to Avi's house, where, to his surprise, Gwen is also present. He tells his friends about the invitation. Despite hurt feelings and misunderstandings, they decide to travel to London together. Connor, Gwen, and Avi arrive at a massive palace. Connor and Gwen enter the castle while Avi stays outside. For an unknown reason, his name isn't on the guest list. NSA agents take their positions around the palace. Inside, a grand reception has taken place. Numerous people with masks and without. A lavish festive event. Connor spots a door and goes through it, entering a corridor that leads to another hall. People in the corridor address him by name, engage in conversations with him, but Connor realizes they are holograms. Solving another puzzle, Black finds himself at a different party. And here, the entertainment reaches a whole new level. Some indulge in prohibited activities, while others enter into intimacy in plain view. Dazed, Connor regains his senses when the founder of Cicada, Philip Dubois, takes the stage. He emotionally speaks about how only the enlightened could find themselves in this hole. 
Connor tries to catch up with Philippe to get more information about the organization, but the crowd prevents him from doing so. In the meantime, Gwen falls into the hands of a security guard who caught her in the office of the founder of Cicada 3301. At the same time, Avi completely forgets about helping his friends and flirts with an unfamiliar woman who exited the castle. Connor searches the castle for Philippe. Peeking into one room after another, he only encounters intimacy scenes. In that moment, Philippe finds him. The organizer is well prepared. He knows everything about his guest, starting from Connor's early childhood. The conversation does not go well from the start and ends with Philippe's guards leading Connor to a room where Gwen is already seated in a tall chair. According to the founder of Cicada, Gwen isn't as simple as she seems. She's an NSA agent. Her real name is Olivia, and she ended up here as part of a special operation by the intelligence agencies, not because she wanted to change her life like Connor. Between Gwen and Connor is a table with a pistol containing a single bullet. Now, the essence of the game is that one of them must quickly kill the other. Connor is the first to grab the pistol, but instead of shooting the girl, he shoots one of Philippe's guards. Seizing the guard's weapon, he eliminates the second guard. Not immediately, but Black notices that Gwen is wounded. Leaving her on the floor, he takes the USB drive with compromising information on the NSA from her and tries to catch up with Philippe. Catching up with him, Connor learns that there is no actual Philippe Dubois. The creators of Cicada only communicate through the internet. He is an actor hired for this role, who himself is shocked by how far the game he was invited to has gone. Barricading himself in a room with the crying actor, Connor sends the information from Gwen's USB drive to a secure hidden storage. At the last moment before the NSA breaches the room, Connor manages to jump out of the window. The actor doesn't dare to follow him, and the intelligence agency operatives shoot him. Connor Black finishes his story in the courtroom. The judge tells him that he has confessed to such a multitude of crimes that she can hardly imagine how many life sentences he deserves. But he feels fine about it. He has no intention of going to prison at all. At some point, phones start ringing for all those present in the courtroom. Even for those who turned off the sound or the device itself before the hearing. Connor informs the judge and everyone else that the ringing phones are a programmed bot that he set up. But that's not the worst it can do. Black demands the charges to be dropped and a monthly payment of $1 million for his silence. Otherwise, the same bot will distribute gigabytes of information about the crimes of intelligence agencies and the government to all global television channels. Then he removes the handcuffs and leaves the courtroom. Connor is back at work in the bar. Avi is behind the counter with his new girlfriend whom he met outside the castle in London. And at a corner table is Black's new girlfriend, Sophie's mother. Suddenly, the cash register activates and prints out the receipt with the message, Gwen is alive and hopes to meet Connor among the candidates for Cicada. On the bar wall, the symbol of the Cicada organization discreetly adorns the scene.